Hey guys, this is Kim from Ghost Gamers Real Life here at DreamHack Masters Bucharest, and with me is Quaker. Quaker, congrats on your win against Sneaky Nick's Nix Assassins. Thanks. Um, it was quite convincing. Did you expect to go through the uh, through them so convincingly? Um, I think so. We we prepared well um, for the game, so yeah. Now this is only your second LAN as a team together. Uh, your first one was at Starletter. What kind of experience uh, did you take from that? Um, Starter was an interesting experience. Our first LAN as a team, obviously. Um, we lost to Lions um, because we didn't prepare well enough for them, I feel like. So um, it was, we were kind of disappointed by our, uh, by our performance, but we're, we're gonna, we're, we hope to do well like this tournament. How was it getting together with this team for the first time? I mean, obviously you've been together on the team with Bulba before, but this time around you got to know like Sing Sing, Pike at all really in person. You spent time together. How was it? Um, it was fun. Uh, I talked to Pike a bit at the TI already, so it was nothing new. EGM and Sing are pretty easy going as well, so the team has good chemistry. Um, you can criticize anyone, so I, I like the team atmosphere. Uh, how's it, the atmosphere then in game? Like when you're when you're in a game, um, how's the dynamic? Who's calling the shots? Is there maybe someone who's like the leader of your all uh, of your team, or is it really just a team decision? Uh, it's mostly a team decision, like 80%. Sometimes Pycat makes the last call, sometimes Bulba, sometimes me, sometimes EGM. It's like everyone, basically. Um, sometimes the drafter makes the last call, like Bulba is picking right now, so often he makes the last call. Um, before that EGM was picking on me, then we would make the last call. So it, it really um, it changes over time, yeah. Uh, what influences your guys' decision on who's actually drafting right now? Because, as you mentioned, you have switched around a few drafters. Is it just because oh, we're trying different things, or is it actually team-specific even? Uh, it's not team-specific. It's just um, whoever feels like drafting drafts. Whoever feels like he has the most, um, he understands the metagame, the, like the, um, the best drafts. Right now, I think it's um, Sam. So he's drafting right now. Before that, I really liked EGM's pick, so I supported his drafting. And I drafted in between and before EGM a bit. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's about metagame and who understands it the best. And Bulba talks with Mario, our coach, a lot. So I think he has the best understanding right now. How does, uh, yeah, speaking of a coach, how does he help you? I mean, he has been with you in Team Liquid already. Is he more of this like motivational coach or is he actually like in-game specific uh, kind of coach as well? Uh, he's kind of motivational, um, but rather more in-game actually. Um, he helps with strategy a lot, he's really smart. Um, and he, he checks what other teams pick, um, pick, and then he checks about the best heroes in the meta right now and stuff like that. So we don't have to check it ourselves. So we just, when we discuss strategy, he has his laptop, he tells us those heroes um, are the best right now, those teams pick those heroes, you can count it with that, and we build strategies off of that. Do you think he's a big part why your guys are so successful right now? I think he helps with communication a lot. If I don't like something that the others do, um, he can help me um, communicate that. So it doesn't sound like I'm blaming them or something. Um, so things like that he's really helpful with. Uh, I think he's part of the success, yeah. Okay, cool. How did, you guys, how did you guys get together anyway? I mean, you and Boba, obviously, you got, were already playing together, but how did you guys find uh, Sing Sing and Pycat? And at, at first, it also looked like you were guys going more even with uh, Excalibur. Um, so at the beginning was me, me and Bulba were searching for a new team, and then we played a bit with Sing um, and EGM, and then we needed a fifth player, and Sing was really good friends with Excalibur, so we picked him up, but then um, Excalibur lacked a lot of experience. Um, I think if we stayed with them, we would have also been a good team, but it would have taken longer, like more time, because he really liked experience. Um, and then PyCat didn't have a team either, so we picked him up, um, because Bulba was good friends with him already, so yeah, that's how the team got made or built. Sounds reasonable, sounds reasonable. Um, you guys are already sponsored, uh, as you have mentioned several times. Um, do you feel like it takes it takes pressure off of you guys, the fact that you already have a sponsor so you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff? Um, yeah, kind of. You have to worry about less. If you have a manager, for example, he, he can fix your, your game schedules and stuff like that, and hotel and things like that, so. Yeah, you just have to worry about playing, I guess. It's, it's nice. Uh, let's talk about you personally. You started entering the scene uh, more or less two years ago. Um, how did you get into Dota 2 anyway? I played Dota 1 um, <laughs> with friends. 
Um, not, uh, I wasn't really that good, I think. I played with Fada. Uh, actually, me and Fada, we didn't like each other back in Dota 1. Um, but then Dota 2 came and I made a team with... Um, who was it? Faylets and Sava Doom, the Bulgarians. I'm not sure if they're that known. I s yeah, I started with them and then it went to... I, went, I made a team with Bone7 and Pilot Eye and those people. Yeah, and then from that on, Father asked me to join Mouse. And yeah, from Mouse, that's why I'm here. Uh, aside from Team Tinker, which team did you like the most? Like, which team would you say was... had? Which team did you have like this phase with that was really good? I guess Liquid at the start. We had like a 28 game winning streak um, at the start. And then the patch came and we had like a 30 game losing streak. Um, <laughs> that was so random. But uh, yeah, at the start of Liquid, I really, I really enjoyed playing. That seems to happen to you quite a lot. I recall that you and Mouseports had actually a really good <laughs> phase as well in that patch, and then boom, you're done. Um, so yeah, what do you do outside of Dota? Um, is there something, do you have another hobby? Do you have something else to commit to? Uh, well, there's school, obviously. That takes a lot of time. Um, what else do I do? I run, I work out, read, um, go out to friends. Um, I guess that's it. Did you start working out before your Red Bull bootcamp, or did that actually get you into this kind of working out? Uh, I started like three months before, and Red Bull was trying to uh, kind of like, it wasn't actually that much gym, it was more like general, like, um, fitness, I guess, we're like outside, like balanced things, um, or like rope stuff, and yeah, it wasn't that much gym, it was more like, yeah, overall fitness, and yeah. Did the demon give you a bit of advice, how to, <laughs> how to get fit? Yeah, well, how to train biceps, he doesn't really know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Also, never skip leg day. Um, <laughs> how was playing with Demon on our team? Or how was the, the the last few weeks of Liquid? I mean, obviously you had this really tense kind of month or a few months, but I think during TI it looked like you guys were sort of refreshed. But how was the team atmosphere back then? It was, I guess, at the start of the Red Bull camp, Red Bull boot camp, we we lost a lot, so the atmosphere wasn't that great. But everyone was still confident that we would do decently well at TI. And then after the bootcamp, we were, we were okay, I guess. Uh, we, we learned a lot through the bootcamp, definitely. And then the last two days before TI, we actually scrimmed DK like five times a day. And I think we got like five times, um, five times better from those games because they were like so high quality games. Um, well, yeah, the atmosphere was good. Um, Jimmy, he's definitely an interesting personality. Um, he can be clowny at times, but when it like, when the games are when they, when they're serious, he he's serious as well. Is it the same for Sing Sing? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes he can go like two fifteen, and we still win. And yeah, in serious games, he's he's serious as well. He needs to be. Uh, so y you've already experienced this kind of really bad side of Dota with Liquid, like this really bad phase. Uh, do you think you can prevent this from happening with Team Tinker? Uh, I definitely hope so. Um, the patch just hit, and we we didn't lose so much like. I guess we lost Sala now, but that wasn't really uh, because of the patch. But um, I think with the players we have right now, we are we're able to adapt to new patches better. Yeah, you guys seem really flexible. I mean, you you switching roles around a lot. Like sometimes EGM goes even and uh, goes carry sometimes, or mid. You alternate between offline mid and carry as well. Um, do you think this is an advantage that you have so many flexible players, or do you think it could also maybe even hurt you guys a little because you don't have this sort of stability? Um, it can hurt actually, because it's it's difficult sometimes switching from offlane to carry. Like offlane, you have to be really passive. You you don't want to die, and then when you carry, you want to do like stuff with your farm, right? You don't want to sit back when you have items. You wanna you wanna kill people. So sometimes it's difficult, but um, in like nine out of ten situations, I think it's really really helpful to be that flexible. Because not not like many teams can do that, switching a support to carry or like um, one to three, one player to one to three. So uh, I think it's it's uh, a big plus of our team. Which role do you prefer? Because we've seen you in every role so far, like for a long period of time, carry mid and offlane. But what do you prefer? Uh, I really enjoyed playing mid at TI, uh, the farming mid. I really enjoyed that, and I played. I really enjoyed playing the the mouse role, um, the farming offlane. I really enjoyed that. Um, I also like. Uh, actually, I don't know. It's like the same. Uh, I guess carry is fun too if you have like slow. I, I hate heroes like Viper though, who like slow and like. Steady. That's why I don't play the necro build with the mech. Cause I, I just hate those slow heroes who can't move. So, 
Yeah. Wait, but you've played a lot of Necrophos these past days. Uh, what, what do you think of the hero? I think it's overpowered. Um, uh, I don't like the mech build though. Like, almost every team goes mech, like PT, smack, and then they push with five. I, I, I don't like the build at all. It's either Atos and then Blink or something like that, or just <laughs> Midas Blink, the, the build that I do. I really like that build. I think you, you farm so fast, and then if they gank you, you can like, Blink away. If you can't, then you, you shouldn't go Blink. Um, yeah. What do you think of uh, going straight for Aghanims, or going for Aghanims in total? Because, uh, for example, Eternal Envy, he doesn't, he doesn't build the Aghanims. He skips it completely. Uh, I think that's a mistake. I think Ag um, Aghanims is overpowered. Like, earlier in the game, <coughs> I went... I am again, 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 this um, refresher, like right away, and then you can insta-kill two heroes, and they can't buy back. And the death time is like 120 or something, so it's like a 3 or 5 game. What do you think of the meta in general? Uh, there's been so many changes. I think the kill bounty change kind of overshadowed most of the hero changes. Uh, what do you think of the current meta? Um, I really like it. It's really flexible. It allows you to almost play any hero, which is what I really like. Even, like, last patch, playing the necro that I do right now with, like, Blank Midas it wouldn't have been possible at all. Um, so I really like that. Um, I think the the current patch makes um, heroes, even like Bloodseek or something like that, uh, viable. Um, so yeah, I think you, you can build like any um, any lineup about any hero. Do you think maybe there's even a hero that you think is underappreciated or like completely off people's radar, but you think could actually be really good? Uh, there have been heroes like that. I still believe Earthshake Mid. It's like overpowered, but team is not convinced. Are you constantly begging EGM and Sam to just pick it for you? I have been, but now our coach has shut it down, so I, I can't anymore. Well, you could have done it. You were drafting yourself at some point. Yeah, I'm, I picked it in scrims, actually. When I was drafting, I just picked it. Uh, but yeah, the team wasn't happy with that, so... Well. I can't imagine, I can't imagine. Uh, so, moving forward, you, you mentioned you're still in school. Um, you're finished in two years, I think. Um, do you, can you see yourself going full-time for Dota? Maybe for like a year. I don't think I would be happy going full-time for like my life. Um, I did it last year, like the Maoist year. I didn't go to school for like half a year, I think, um, or almost a year. And then, I don't know, it was pretty boring, like playing all day. It kinda, and then you, if you lose too, it, it's like pretty depressive actually. And then, yeah, I, I don't like playing it. Maybe for like a year, it would be fine. But then after, I would go like to university or something like that. So you definitely want to do something on the side and not just focus on Dota? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, well, thank you for the interview. Um, the last part is for you. Do you have any shout outs? Shout out to Team Tinker, obviously, 100 TB sponsor, um, Angela, family. That's it. Okay. Thanks. No problem.